Right, now I would like to talk to you about archetypes. And I want to talk to you specifically about the archetypes that we all have. In fact, there are four archetypes that we all have. We all have a child archetype, and there's a whole range of child archetypes. We all have our victim, which is our self-esteem. We all have our prostitute, which is our archetype of worthiness. And we all have our saboteur, which is our archetype of choice. So let's begin with the child archetype, because as I said, there are five child archetypes, and we all have one. And our child archetype is that little voice in our head that talks to us every so often. Our child archetype is extremely intuitive, extremely playful, a little naive, but it's very important that you listen to your child archetype. So there are a number of child archetypes. The first one is the Peter Pan child. That's my one, okay? I'm the Peter Pan child. I love adventure. In fact, Peter Pan children enjoy adventure. It doesn't matter where it is. It can be inside, it can be outside, it can be in our head. So long as we are on an adventure and having fun. And that's the key to the Peter Pan child. Now, sometimes we are a little irresponsible because we do get lost in adventure. But that's okay, that's fine. So long as we are on an adventure. The key with the Peter Pan child is to understand how big an adventure do you want to have. And the key is not to limit yourself, but to open up yourself so that the world is a place of adventure for the Peter Pan child. So yes, it is important for Peter Pan to go on adventures and to enjoy them. Because when your child is happy, it really makes a difference to your own joyfulness and your playfulness and your ability to cope with things that are a bit more serious. So always remember that if you have the Peter Pan child, enjoy the adventure and take advantage of it. The other thing that I want to talk about Peter Pan children is that they make great leaders. The story by J.M. Barry is a perfect illustration and that is why they're called the Peter Pan or the Eternal Child. Peter Pan children make fantastic leaders, but we gather around us the lost boys, people who are lost. They don't have to be boys, they can be girls as well. But we gather all of those people around us who are lost and we look after them. So this makes Peter Pan really good leadership material because they really take care of all of those little lost souls that come to them for help Peter Pan looks after them, takes care of them, stands them up on their own two feet, and when they're ready, is prepared to let them go. So always remember, if you have the Peter Pan child archetype, you will always attract that person around you who just doesn't quite know what they are doing, where they are going, and it is your responsibility to just help them out, look after them, okay, and just head them in the right direction. So that's the Peter Pan child. The second child archetype I want to talk about is the nature child. And this is the person who loves to be outside. In fact, any excuse to be outside, they have to be outside. They love animals, they love plants, they love all outdoor activities, whether it's swimming, climbing, jumping off things, it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't matter what environment it is either. It can be by the beach, it can be in a rainforest, it can be in a desert, so long as the nature child is outside, enjoying all the beauty of nature. Nature children, particularly these days, are extremely important because they are the environmental warriors. They look after Mother Earth. They look after the animals. They care for everything in its natural state. So it is important that if you are a nature child to get out there, enjoy yourself, be proactive, take care of the world and the environment that you live in, and that is extremely important. As you can tell, there's a bit of a movement these days. The nature children are really rising and they're really speaking out about what we are doing to the environment that we live in. So if you are a nature child, that is your job, that is your responsibility to get out there and to discuss and to guide and to lead people. Because as you know, the earth is very important. The animals are very important. So this is the nature child. Bit of a challenge when you're very young, because as you know, when you are young, you have to go to school and often school is an inside environment and you have to sit inside. And when I was a teacher, it was very interesting. I used to watch the nature children and they'd be looking at the clock, just waiting for the time to tick over so that they could 
rush outside at lunchtime or playtime and involve themselves again. The other very important thing for nature children is to remember to wear, walk barefoot on the ground. Okay, you just need that grounding and that's very important. So get rid of the shoes, get rid of the socks and just walk. And it doesn't matter what environment because nature children don't really care. They don't need the lush grass. They're quite happy to walk over rocks and stones and whatever else. So that is very important, but it's important for your own persona and that spiritual aspect of yourself to get out there and walk barefoot. So that's the nature child. Then the third one is the divine child. Now, this is the child that is connected to spirit. They're often daydreamers. They will often sit there and they will just drift off and they're going back to spirit where it is a beautiful experience. It's quiet, it's calm, it's peaceful, it's full of love. And angelic children just love that environment. And this is very important. So if you are a divine child, allow yourself that time, that freedom, to just sit quietly. Meditation is extremely important for these adults or children. It doesn't really matter where you are. If you can meditate and just have that little quiet time by yourself because you want to connect with spirit. Because as all divine children know, this world is rather chaotic. It's very busy and there's a whole lot of things that just happen. And often with divine children, it is a very harsh environment for them to live in. So again, just allow yourself that moments of peace and quiet to relax, to meditate, to go back into spirit and to reconnect with who you truly are. The fourth child I want to talk about, and this is called the indulged child. And this is a child that is given every opportunity. Now, it may or may not be a case of money, that really doesn't matter. Often indulged children are sent to the best schools, but not always, but they are always given the opportunity to excel. They are told by their parents, teachers, and their friends at how good they are, okay? And this is the indulged child. They're given opportunities and they're given the encouragement to excel, and this is what they do. So indulged children make great leaders because they've been told all of their life how good they are and what leadership potential they have. The thing with indulged children is that sometimes they can throw a little tantrum if they don't get their own way. So it's important to understand that yes, leadership is about leading, but it's also about responsibility, okay? It's also about guiding people and taking people with you. And that's very important. So that's the indulged child. The last child archetype that is a possibility that you have is the wounded child. And this is a child that has been abused or neglected or abandoned in some ways. Often it is a result of family, but sometimes there are other ways that the abuse or the neglect can come into that child's life. Now, wounded children, you have to understand if you are a wounded child, yes, go and get some healing, absolutely necessary. However, it is important also to understand that these wounds are going to stay with you the rest of your life. Sorry about that, can't help it. But you have to deal with these things basically every single day, and I understand that, and it's never easy. But the key is to make sure that you take them on, deal with them, and then just let them go. And when tomorrow comes, you may have to go through the same process again. That is fine. The really good thing about wounded children is that they are very determined. They are extremely resilient. They are often very, very creative. And the key with the wounded child is to use that creative energy into the positive, to really think of where is my skill? Where are my talents? What can I do? Because with all of that creative energy and all of that determination and that resilience, the wounded child can be absolutely brilliant. As creative people, as teachers, as musicians, it doesn't really make matter which area you go into so long as you keep in mind to be positive and to understand that, yep, this has happened in the past, you're going to carry this with you for the rest of your lifetime. However, stay positive and work towards something that can really make you great and 
absolutely. And there are a lot of wounded children that have greatness written all around them, particularly when they realise that they can achieve. And it's up to them. Once they do that, they're on fire. So they are the five child archetypes that we all have. We have one of those five. That's our child archetype. The second archetype that we all have is our victim archetype. And this is the key archetypal energy. It is so important. Our victim is our self-esteem. Yes, it is how we feel about ourselves. However, I have discovered that before the emotion kicks in, firstly, it's our attitude. Important for our self-esteem to determine what is our attitude when we are at home, when we are dealing with family, when we go out with friends, when we go off to work, when we go on holidays. It's always attitude first, quickly followed by the emotion. So the key to you always with your victim archetype is to understand what is your attitude. When your attitude is strong, when your attitude is positive, that's when the emotion is going to be more elation rather than depression. And it's very important to understand. Now, I see self-esteem, they go in graphs, and you have this little up and down one, you have the big roller coaster one, you have the little rolling hills one, you have the one that just bubbles along. So all of us are different, and it's different because of the different things that we do in our life, okay? And that's why our emotions fluctuate. That's why our self-esteem fluctuate. It's not a consistent thing. If you want to make it consistent, if you want to really have a strong self-esteem and a very strong victim archetypal energy, the key is to be aware of your attitude. What is your attitude when you go to work? Okay, if you go to work in a very grumpy, grumbly mood, guess what? You're going to have a bad day. If you go along with a very positive attitude, even when things go wrong, it won't affect you. It's going to keep your self-esteem strong. So always understand, your victim archetype, very important. Attitude first, followed by the emotion. The other thing with our victim archetype, and it's very important to understand this, yes, we all have our ups and downs, we all have our highs and lows. The key is, when you are feeling really confident, when you are feeling contentment within, just stand there quietly and just Feel that emotion. Understand what that contentment feels like. Understand what the elation of success and achievement feels like. Just take it in and fill your whole body with that emotion. And when you do that, that's very important because when the times change, and they do, and you're feeling a little bit down, a little bit not just yourself, all you need to do is once again stand quietly and tune into that elation that contentment that you had when your self-esteem was really strong. And that's a very important technique that you can use. And guess what? If you're feeling down and you're staying there quietly and you take in that elation and that contentment as to when you were really strong and your self-esteem was totally enhanced, you won't stay down for long. You'll very soon pick yourself up and you'll be off again. Important for you to understand that your victim archetype goes with every other archetypal energy. It doesn't matter where you are. If you have a king archetype like me and you go off to do your creative thing, guess what? Your victim is standing right beside your king. If you have a teacher archetype, your victim is going with your teacher archetype and standing right there like that. And that's very important to understand. That this victim archetype, your self-esteem, is with you in every aspect of your life. So the key is to be positive, Okay, to understand that feeling of contentment and to fill yourself with that and to keep your self-esteem as strong as you possibly can. The third one that we all have is our prostitute. Now, interestingly enough, your self-esteem and your prostitute are like that. They're basically joined at the hip. When your attitude's good and your self-esteem is strong and you feel really positive, Guess what? Your prostitute is going to say, I am worthy. When your self-esteem is down at a low point and you don't feel good about yourself, you're going to say, oh, I'm not worthy. It's going to be the poor me victim 
and your prostitute is going to say, yeah, poor you, we're not worthy of anything. So the key is, remember these two archetypal energies, they're very important because we all have them. So they're very strong energies. So the key is keep your victim strong and your prostitute will be strong as well. Always consider yourself worthy. Don't put yourself down. Be positive in everything you think, say and do. Be in the present. And this keeps your worthiness up there. If someone comes along and you're feeling a little bit down, just wait and say, can you get back to me tomorrow? And understand that you make decisions, and this is when your saboteur comes in, when you are strong and positive. Your prostitute is your archetype of worthiness. It is important to see yourself worthy in all aspects, okay? It's not always to do with your physicality. It is to do with your time and your energy, your creativity, your intellectual ability. This is your prostitute at work in all aspects of your life. So understand it's not just about your physical self. It's in everything that you do. So consider yourself worthy in all that you decide to take on. After all, this is your life and you are in charge of it. And so you are in charge of your prostitute and make sure that you treat it with respect. Then the fourth one we have is our saboteur and this is our archetype of choice. Now, we make decisions, we make, we choose in three different ways. We go firstly our intuition. That is quick, bang, gone within a second. Then we go to our head and we start to think about things. After that, we usually then go to our heart and think, how do we feel? How do I feel? How does my partner feel? How do the children feel? As I say, in my wife's case, it's how do the dogs feel, okay? Because the dogs are very important to her. And this is our saboteur. I always say to people, always go back to your intuition. That is the important place to make decisions from. However, as I said, intuition, bang, gone in a second, and then we go to our head. Importantly, go back to your gut feeling. What was your first reaction? Okay, what did you feel as soon as this was proposed, or when you went somewhere, or you met somebody? Always go back to your intuitive self because your intuition is never wrong. It is always correct. Okay, yes, of course, then we need to go to our heads. We need to think about things. We need to decide whether this is going to work or not. But always go back to your intuition, to that gut feeling as to your first impression of an idea or a person or a place or whatever you wanted to do. And then you can go to your heart and see how you feel, see how other people feel and work out. But remember, intuition is extremely important. Now, you can see particularly how those last three archetypal energies work together. There's your victim, that's your self-esteem. What is your attitude? Okay, it's attitude quickly followed by emotion. Then your prostitute comes in and says, what am I worth in this situation? And then your saboteur comes in and decides, what is my choice here? What decision is I am, that I am going to make? And you can understand when your self-esteem is strong, when your attitude is really good, you feel worthy, you will make the right intuitive decision. Okay, and the reverse is also the case. When your victim is really pathetic and poor and you're not feeling good about yourself, you consider yourself unworthy, that's when you sabotage yourself. So it begins with your victim archetype. It begins with your attitude. Get your attitude right. Get your self-esteem right. Consider yourself worthy and be intuitive. And when you put all of those three things in together, you've got three strong archetypal energies working for you all of the time. And boy, can you be powerful when that is the case. Have a great day.